the Joe Rogan experience. It's the same with Khabib. Yeah. Oh, Khabib didn't fight anybody. No, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> he makes them look like he, they're fighting me. That's the difference. Look what he did to Justin Gaethje. That's all you need to know. If you say Justin Gaethje's a nobody, you're crazy. You watch that Tony Ferguson fight. Justin Gaethje's a fucking animal. He's a savage. And he just closed that gap. And he ate a lot of leg kicks, too, man. He ate a lot of leg kicks that would, I mean, I don't know how many of those you can eat from Justin. Right. Maybe he had like five or six more in the tank. Right. So you're on E. But he closed the gap and then wound up finishing with a triangle off of his back. I mean, God damn. A, a serious question about this because I went through it a couple times. Mm -hmm. So from the moment he got kicked, mm -hmm. then he initiates the takedown. So it was a kick. Uh, he tried the first round. He did it off a head inside single. Didn't work. Second round, he tried it off a double from the outside leg kick. First round was an inside leg kick, hence the inside single. Didn't work. So then he goes to the double. It's 22 seconds from that till the finish. Mm -hmm. So 22 seconds, we're apart. 22 seconds later, you're unconscious. I mean, this is my question to you. Is that the best back take you've ever seen in MMA? Because what he does is, when Gaethje is sprawling in this contest, he's not just sprawling. He is sprawling and turning so he doesn't get pushed into the fence. He was very diligent about that in the Alvarez and the Gaethje fights. You can go back and you can watch it. So in this fight, when you, you see the level change that Khabib hits, you see automatically Gaethje turn because he mm -hmm. doesn't want to get turned that direction. But what Khabib does is he actually scoots under him, pulls him up, and then with his head posts him over gets the hands to plant. Well, once the hands are planted, the double is over. He doesn't care about it anymore. Now he just wants the tight waist. And from the tight waist, he's holding, his elbows aren't flared. Mm -hmm. They're tight here, right? Like he's T-Rexing inside. At that point, you have created, if you're Justin Gaethje, putting your hands, you've created a stable structure for this guy to now mount. Plus, if you want to escape to the fence to like stand, he can control the uh, ascent. So he goes, double, turns, Push his hands to the mat, forces Gaethje down, and then with his uh, his uh, gable grip, then keeps it there, and then replaces it with the hooks, and then turns it into a head, uh, turns it to a fake, not a real Joe Rogan, a fake uh, head and arm triangle attempt, just so Gaethje gets his elbows away from his body. Then he chair sits to uh, occupy the space, then throws the leg over, and then sits back and takes mercy upon him, as we learn later from Daniel Cormier. Rather than armbar him in front of his mom's, I'm just going to triangle you because that's the merciful. This guy is out here taking fucking pity on his <laughs> opponents. And he's doing back takes like that. He is, John Jones to me is the most accomplished fighter we've ever seen. Like the, the, the things accumulate over time. No one is as flawless as Khabib Nurmagomedov. Not even close. I think that is the argument, right? Like, who is the GOAT? I think if you look at John Jones' early career, right? John Jones wins the title in 2011, and from then on has fought more fights as championship fights than he has other fights. So he's the most accomplished, for sure. Wins the title, the earliest, youngest guy to ever win the title in the UFC. Beats Mauricio Shogun Hua, who's a legend. And then the way he dominates all these other fighters, up until you get to Alexander Gustafson, you could make the argument that he had a similar career. You can make the argument, like if you look at what he did, John didn't lose any rounds. John was smashing people. You look what he did to Rashad Evans. You look what he did to Rampage Jackson. You look what he did to Leota Machida. You look what he did to everybody. All Everybody he fought up until the Gustafson fight. But the Gustafson fight, then you have to say, well, how much slack do you give him for admittedly not training? Because it was a really close fight. He pulls it out in the championship round, even though he's out of shape, even though you talk to Greg Jackson, he didn't train for that fight. Didn't fucking train, like barely worked out, but definitely didn't go through a training camp. Still managed to beat one of the best guys in the division after getting taken down for the first time in his career. Then goes on a tear, right? Beats, you look at the way he beat Daniel Cormier in the first fight. Took him down, like who the fuck takes Daniel <laughs> Cormier down, right? right? And then you look at him in the second fight, even though it was ruled a no contest, we know what the fuck happened. He head kicked him and stopped him. You know, it was f spectacular. You look at what John has done, then you have to take into account the things that didn't go that well. And we haven't seen those from Khabib yet. You have to take into account the fight like Tiago Santos, right? That fucker goes to a, a, a split decision. You're like, whoa, Dominic Reyes. Dominic Reyes thought he won the fight. Right. You know, real I close. Did too. Real close fight. So those fights haven't happened with Khabib yet. And we don't know if they ever could. We don't know. Right? Like right now, would you see flawless victory after flawless victory? You can maybe make the argument that Khabib lost two rounds his entire career. Maybe the second round against Justin, 
or uh, first round, first round Justin, rather, argue, maybe, maybe first round rather against Justin, and maybe the third round with Connor. That's right. That's it. Right. And either one of those didn't get cut, didn't get dropped, didn't get hurt. Right. To never get cut and to never get dropped, I don't think folks understand what that means. Crazy. In a sport filled with, it's not a scientific measurement per se, right? Who gets cut the most or something? But in a sport built on unpredictability, yeah. on violence, uh, you know, St. Pierre went to wrestling to get away from all of that in large, in large part, and then to never experience that is like. It is shocking beyond description. I don't, shocking. I don't know how to explain that to folks. It's uh, but to your point, the thing about Khabib where he falls short is that it's just an inevitability. Like your run through twenty nine fights is the best run I've seen through twenty nine fights ever, ever, ever. But I, you know, and John's not my best friend or anything, but I just don't. That is the best total resume. I've ever seen. John is the best resume. It's just, it's not, I mean, I know he got, he was, he was getting all salty on Twitter being like, these fucking Khabib fans. It's like, dude, put the, eh, here's he what, shouldn't do that. Well, he shouldn't do it, but here's my point to John. It's like, dude, put the keyboard down for just a second. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to go to heavyweight and you're going to probably win. I mean, I don't know if that's a guarantee, but let's assume that you do. All of the conversation, everything that happens right now is just recency bias. And Khabib retired, yeah. and his father died, and it was this incredibly mm -hmm. sad and like yet yeah, yeah. inspiring moment. Let the fucking guy have his moment, because when you have your moment, all of the con the worm is going to turn. Yeah, and then everyone's going to be like, "John's the fucking greatest." It's, he's going to get his, just not today at this moment. Yeah. Recency bias—that's real. Recent bias is that's that's a real thing. Like, you know, we just watch Khabib, and then the fact that Khabib did. Uh, supposedly retire. Come on, son. I know you want some more. Yeah, I know. I, I haven't eaten much, so <laughs> my head is spinning a little bit. That's all right. Everyone asks me, like, are you, when, when I go on, it's like, are you going to smoke weed? I'm like, there's no chance I'm smoking Joe Rogan's <laughs> fucking super weed. There's no chance I'm smoking it right now. Salud. I haven't done anything in a month. I had a couple glasses of wine last night, and I was like, woo. Yeah, I'm feeling it a little bit. Got to mm. be careful. The, um, the John Jode situation is also, uh, it's a contrast in personalities, right? Khabib, who's this really religious, very moral, ethical person who doesn't drink, he doesn't party, he doesn't do anything, he just trains. He's always in phenomenal shape. He he takes every fight incredibly serious. He's never been out of shape. He's never been fat. He's never, I mean, he's missed weight a couple of times earlier in his career, but he got that dialed in. He's, he's just uh, so dedicated. Whereas John is a wild man. Right. He's just wild. I mean, you talk about not training for the, Met, oh, so excuse me, for the, uh, the Gustafson fight. Buddy, that ain't the only fight he didn't train yeah. for. How about what he said to Cormier? I did coke yeah. and I still beat you. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't think he's lying. I mean, the no. stories I've heard, I don't want to repeat them no. because I cannot verify them. No. But I've heard stories like, if y'all think that was the one fight, he just like, oh, I'm going to take that. I'm going to pump the brakes this time. No, yeah. bitch. I mean, uh, here's the other part about it. It's like, um, when you, so who's a guy, for example, who maintained dominance through the game and took, you know, significant amounts of time off in boxing? Floyd Mayweather would be a great example of that. Yeah. But Floyd has been training as a family affair from adolescence, right? Yeah. For the long part of his life. And he is so gifted that he can take time off and the game is so developed that people aren't going to make warp speed development in his absence. And so they got a little bit better every time he took a little bit of time off, like the Maidana first fight with the corkscrew punch. Mm -hmm. That was a little bit of a, of a wild uh, card there. But in general, he was able to maintain that dominance. In MMA, the game changes rapidly, mm -hmm. super fast, because people are still discovering best practices. In two years, people will not be doing the same kinds of things to the same degree they do now. The calf kick and its explosion mm -hmm. is, a, is sort of an obvious example of that. John was doing things like not training between camps. I mean, that's something only elite boxers do because they've been doing this since they were five, six years old, and they can take the time to not necessarily do that. Whereas most MMA fighters are like, I'm a, I'm a everyday martial artist. I just ramp it up. He would do nothing and then something and still go out there and beat world fucking champions in what at the time was the UFC's marquee division. That is out of this fucking world bonkers. I'm gonna train. I'm gonna beat you as like a part time guy. Yeah. What? Yeah. You just couldn't wrap your head around it. I wonder if maybe there's some benefit to because it's not like he got totally out of shape. But I wonder if there's some benefit to that and that he's not getting beat up. He's not getting his joints wrecked and you know there's probably there's, there's a long yeah it's a real question of like what is what's the best way to approach it. Episodes of the Joe Rogan Experience are now free on Spotify. That's right, they're free. 
from September 1st to December 1st, they're going to be available everywhere. But after December 1st, they will only be available on Spotify, but they will be free. That includes the video. The video will also be there. It'll also be free. That's all we're asking. Just go download Spotify. Much love. Bye-bye. Mm.